So my duties are monitoring air um, concentrations within EPA standards in um, some environment. So within a tunnel and outside a tunnel, for example, or inside your building, your basement, your attic, seeing the differences between pollutants in your um, house or your uh, roads or whatever air quality you wanted to test. I wanted to get my uh, professional geologist license um, because they have professional geologists working within the company and one way to get the license is to have recommendations from professional geologists. That was a short term or two years short term goal. Next was to advance in my career, learn more about EPA methodology, TO15, TO14, these are just EPA standard numbers and several other methods that they use to study the environment. You can take these anywhere if you know how to use the methods. You can take them anywhere and use them in almost any lab because they will uh, use protocol that's very identical to that EPA standard just for um, identity sake or identical sampling sake. And then I came to UIC at, at 18. Uh, and then at 18, I, I was in computer science for one year. I switched over to Earth and Environmental Sciences about a year after I joined the major because you get to a point where you start to feel your passion is probably a little bit more important than your financial gain. I convinced him that I could make money still from Earth Science. I told him there are many careers in geophysics um, or in the environmental consulting, like I said, um, that he could, uh, that we could use to uh, better ourselves. Now he always wanted the best for me, so that's why he thought financially I can keep my passion and also make monetary gain. <laughs> you can do both at the same time. That's how I sold my dad. My mom was simple. I told her I love that, and she said, "Okay, no problems." I was watching an interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson recently, and he was saying how how much pressure from uh, his society uh, he got for becoming an astrophysicist. It's more like, hey, you're Neil deGrasse Tyson, you're tall at the time. He was athletic at the time. Oh, you should be a wrestler, you should be a football player. That's the kind of blowback you get in at least Nigerian community. It's, you should be a doctor because you make this much money. You should be a lawyer because you make this much money. You should be a, a you know, stereotypical. I wouldn't call it stereotypical as much as a very defined career path so you can make that much money right so if you go against the grain become an artist to become an earth scientist it's kind of looked at as strange why is he doing this so yeah I feel I felt the pressure but again my uncle was an engineer so he encouraged me a lot my dad is an engineer he also encouraged me my mom will support most of my decisions as long as they are they're logical so they were logical so she supported my decision as well um, but it is a real problem for a lot of youth who want to get into a field like this and receive blowback because it's not doctor lawyer or something more like an athlete for example I did learn a very niche um, machine niche software um, and that really helped me. It's uh, the software and the machine I use. Uh, the software first is called the ChemStation software, um, coupled with the machine, the GCMS, which is the Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometer. Um, this is a machine used to monitor um, the organic composition of a compound that's injected into the GCMS. And the software will tell you you have. Um, certain amount of, I don't know, benzene, certain amount of toluene, certain amount of um, phthalates and other compounds that you will learn if you take organic geochemistry. <laughs> as soon as I graduated, I applied, or a few months prior to graduation, I started applying to places, especially labs, and then eventually I got in contact with stat analysis, and I told them, I know the GCMS, the gas chromatography mass spectrometry, um, uh, m machine. <laughs> I know it very well, so hire me please. And they said yes. So I was hired within weeks of my graduation. The first order of business was to get a job and get professional experience. Without that, 
rising through the ranks is kind of tough. Experience counts for pretty much half of your application. Your um, application tells, oh, you did this, you did that, that's all cool, but what do you have, have what practical experience do you have? A successful environmental scientist has to be a critical thinker. Um, a lot of times problems or solutions to problems seem correct, but you have to approach a problem or at least a solution to that problem in um, a critical manner. Find out what is wrong with that solution, is this correct? Um, poke holes in that solution. And sometimes you find that that so-called solution had more problems than a problem. <laughs> In a sense, working for my professor, my advisor, Fabian Koenig, uh, he made me work as if I was an, an intern in the position. So learning the GCMS um, was kind of a side job. You, had to, you have to learn new concepts, new ways to think about um, chemistry and compounds. And as such, that was kind of my internship. So I would say maybe an internship is not crucial, but something that goes beyond theory, goes beyond just the books. Books are great, you learn a lot, but not as much as you can learn from actual applications. I find discovery. Um, sometimes I find something new I haven't heard about or seen before, and I'm taken back to that childlike state. So when I'm, even with the GCMS, which I think I know so well, I'm analyzing um, air samples from people's uh, um, basements and their gloves and I find some compound and I start to research what is this compound, what's the history of the compound, where did it go come from and then I start to look at the history of that compound and the I item or the um, gas that came from and you can paint a picture in your head and think about all what could happen and then you wonder about developing um, remediation techniques from those. Mm -hmm.